Last night, I went to see a movie for the first time in several years. It was the documentary about Steve Bannon called The Brink. I regret my decision to interrupt my long-term boycott of the film industry. The film was awful. But before we get to that, visit my shop, Agitator Coffee and Books, at the URL agitatorbooks.com. And support me on Subscribestar, subscribestar.com slash laurel. I went hoping to learn something about Steve Bannon. I actually know very little about him, except that he's a political strategist. He used to be the executive chairman of Breitbart News, and he's the former White House chief of staff in the Trump administration. I also know that a lot of people call him a racist, but that term is thrown around irresponsibly a lot and is often used to describe anybody to the right of AOC. I don't instantly believe it whenever somebody's called a racist. I need to know more for myself. What I really wanted to understand is what his value added is. Because he is so enthusiastically targeted by the left, that makes me think Steve Bannon is a person of consequence. Why? What makes him a person of consequence? I understand that he was intimately involved in Trump's campaign and that he was a member of Trump's staff, but so were a lot of people. He is very intelligent and has an impressive resume. Harvard Business School, seven years as a naval officer, a successful career as an investment banker at Goldman Sachs, but a lot of people have impressive resumes. Maybe not millions, but hundreds and maybe thousands. Why is Steve Bannon viewed as especially important by both the left and the right? That film told me nothing. Alison Clayman, the filmmaker, had intimate access to film Bannon in his home, on plane rides, and in meetings for over a year, and she failed to tell me a damn thing about what he believes, what his goals are, why people seek him out for political strategy advice, and what makes him so different. Alison Clayman does not appear on camera in the film, but what snippets of news and clips of pundits she chooses to edit in says a lot about what she wants the audience to believe. She used a lot of clips of people calling him a racist, but as I said before, I need evidence. Just calling him a racist isn't enough. There were also lots of clips showing that he associates himself with other people who have been called racist a lot. But if you call five different people a racist, you can't support your claim for each of them by saying, look, they associate themselves with four other people that I've called a racist. That's just circular. I need evidence. What I did see in the film was him agreeing to assist in the campaign of an African-American candidate and him speaking very highly of that candidate on camera. I did see him include at least one Middle Eastern man in his inner circle. I saw him carefully and respectfully considering the input of several women throughout the course of the film. None of these things disprove bigotry, but they are evidence to the contrary of the attempted message, with the only evidence in favor being the repeated ad hominem attacks and the association with other people who have been the targets of ad hominem attacks. Racism is the only issue the filmmaker seems to have even attempted to touch on. She gives the impression that racism is what Steve Bannon is all about, even though she was unable to show him saying anything racist after having followed him around for a full year. So if that's not what he was talking about, otherwise she would have shown it. What was he talking about? What is his message? I don't know. She identified a few catchphrases and things that he likes to say, and then showed him saying those things again and again. She also identified a few innocuous sections of his stump speech and then just showed that again and again. She really seemed to be going out of her way to avoid showing him saying anything of substance. She was with him for a year. In order for the film to be that vapid, she would have to very intentionally and carefully avoid showing anything of substance Bannon said during that time. What that says to me is that she was afraid if she showed the true information, it would damage the narrative she was intending to present. 
This is what I have come to expect from the mainstream media. I understand that journalists and documentary filmmakers are not the same thing, but they do have a lot in common. It's okay to do an opinion piece, but even an opinion piece should seek to inform. It is impossible to cover any subject completely, but one should try to cover as much as possible in the time allotted. Alison Clayman did not do that. She avoided the substance of the subject of her film. After I expressed my frustration on social media that the film had told me nothing about Steve Bannon, someone suggested that I watch Bannon's interview with Carl Benjamin, AKA Sargon of Akkad. That interview is 50 minutes, which is about half the length of the documentary. That is an excellent interview. I highly recommend you watch it. There's a link in the description down below. It's worth 50 minutes of your time. In that interview, I learned what Steve Bannon's value added is. Bannon believes that the Cold Civil War is essentially nationalism versus globalism, and that globalism benefits the elites by giving them better access to cheap labor, side effects of globalism be damned. He also says that when people call you a racist, it is often because they can't figure out how to argue with you on the issues. That's not all they talked about in the 50 minute interview. Those are just some of the highlights. Also, I think there's more going on than what they talked about, but there's only so much you can cover in 50 minutes. He seems to have a stronger grasp of the cold civil war than any of the politicians I've seen running for office. The politicians seem completely clueless about the cold civil war. It's like they don't even know it's happening. Steve Bannon does know, and while many of us do, he has actually found his way into the upper echelons of politics. That's what makes him special. Through his own personal history, and that's where his impressive resume comes into play, he has earned his way into certain circles, and he has an understanding of what's behind the polarization. The interview with Sargon of Akkad took place before Alison Clayman finished her film. She could have included pieces of the interview in her documentary film. She chose not to. Don't go and watch that documentary. It is a piece of crap. Watch the interview with Sargon of Akkad. That's all for today. 